Spectre 2015 film. This video compresses information gathered from Wikipedia in video format. Studies prove that reading while listening improves comprehension, increases speed as well as expands vocabulary and enhances fluency. Video sections. Abstract. Plot. Production. Marketing. Release. Reception. External links. Give your feedback on the comment section. Support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Thanks. Abstract. Spectre is a 2015 spy film and the 24th in the James Bond series produced by E.ON. Productions for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Columbia Pictures. It is the fourth film to feature Daniel Craig as the fictional MI6 agent James Bond. And the second film in the series directed by Sam Mendes following Skyfall. It was written by John Logan, Neil Purvis, Robert Wade, and Jez Butterworth. It is the final James Bond film to be distributed theatrically by Sony Pictures releasing. As Universal Pictures will distribute the next film in the series. No Time to Die. The story sees Bond pitted against the global criminal organization Spectre and their enigmatic leader Ernst Stavro Blofeld, Christoph Waltz, who plans to launch a national surveillance network to mastermind criminal activities across the globe. The film marks Spectre and Blofeld's first appearance in a Neon Productions film since 1971's Diamonds Are Forever. A character resembling Blofeld had previously appeared in the 1981 film Fewer Eyes Only, but, because of the Thunderball controversy, he is not named, nor is his face shown. Several James Bond characters, including M, Q and E Money Penny, return, with new additions Les Adu as Dr. Madeline Swan, Dave Bautista as Mr. Hinks, Andrew Scott as Max Denby and Monica Bellucci as Lucia Chiara. Spectre was filmed from December 2014 to July 2015 in Austria, the United Kingdom, Italy, Morocco and Mexico. The action scenes prioritized practical effects and stunts, while employing computer-generated imagery made by five different companies. Spectre was estimated to have cost around $245 million with some sources listing it as high as $300 million making it the most expensive Bond film and one of the most expensive films ever made. Spectre was released on 26 October 2015 in the United Kingdom on the same night of the world. Premiere at the London Royal Albert Hall. It was followed by a worldwide release, including IMAX screenings. It was released in the United States on 6 November. Spectre received mixed reviews from critics who praised the film's action sequences, cinematography, acting and musical score, though some criticism was aimed at the excessive runtime, screenplay and pacing. The theme song, Writings on the Wall, performed and co-written by Sam Smith, won an Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Original Song. Spectre grossed over $880 million worldwide, making it the sixth highest grossing film of 2015 and the second largest unadjusted total for the series after Skyfall. The next film in the series, No Time to Die, is to be released in November 2020, with Craig reprising his role for the final time and Kerry Joji Fukunaga directing. Plot a posthumous message from the previous M leads MI6 agent James Bond to carry out an unauthorized mission in Mexico City on the Day of the Dead, where he stops a terrorist bombing plot. Bond kills Marco Chiara, the terrorist leader, and takes his ring, which is emblazoned with a stylized octopus. Upon his return to London, Bond is suspended from field duty by Gareth Mallory, the current M who is engaged in a power struggle with Max Denby, whom Bond dubs C, the Director General of the new, privately backed joint intelligence service formed by the murder of MI5 and MI6. C campaigns for Britain to join the Global Surveillance and Intelligence Initiative Nine Eyes, and uses his influence to close down the OO field agent section, which he believes is outdated. Bond disobeys M's orders and travels to Rome to attend Chiara's funeral. He saves and seduces Chiara's widow, 
Lucia, who tells him Shiara belonged to an organization of businessmen with criminal and terrorist connections. Bond uses Shiara's ring to infiltrate a meeting to select Shiara's replacement, where he identifies the leader, Franz Oberhauser. After hearing Oberhauser give the order for the Pale King to be assassinated, Bond is pursued across the city in his Aston Martin DB10 by the organization's assassin, Mr. Hinks, driving a Jaguar CX-75. Eve Moneypenny informs Bond that the Pale King is Mr. White a former member of the organization's subsidiary Quantum who had fallen afoul of Oberhauser. Bond asks her to investigate Oberhauser, who was presumed dead roughly 20 years earlier. Bond locates White in Althausi, Austria, where he is dying of thallium poisoning. He tells Bond to find and protect his daughter, psychiatrist Dr. Madeline Swan, who will take him to Lamrakane in order to locate Oberhauser. White then commits suicide. Bond confronts Swan and rescues her from Hinks and his forces. The pair meet Q, who links Oberhauser to Bond's previous missions, identifying Le Chiffre, Dominic Green and Raoul Silver as agents of the same organization, which Swan identifies as Spectre. Swan takes Bond to Lamrakane, a hotel in Tangier, and they discover that White left evidence directing them to Oberhauser's base at a crater in there. Sahara, taking a train to a remote station. Bond and Swan encounter Hinks, who gets ejected from the train in the ensuing fight, and are escorted to Oberhauser's base. Oberhauser reveals that Spectre has funded the Joint Intelligence Service while staging terrorist attacks around the world, creating a need for the Nine Eyes program. In return, C will give Spectre unlimited access to intelligence gathered by Nine Eyes allowing them to anticipate and counteract investigations into their operations. Bond is tortured as Oberhauser discusses their shared history. After the younger Bond was orphaned, Oberhauser's father, Hannes, became his temporary guardian, believing that Bond supplanted his role as son. Oberhauser killed his father, staged his own death, adopted the name Ernst Stavro Blofeld and went on to form Spectre and target Bond. Bond and Swan stun Blofeld by setting off an explosive wristwatch at his face. And the two escape to London to prevent Nine Eyes from going online. In London, Bond and Swan meet M. Q. Bill Tanner and Moneypenny with the intention of arresting C. Swan and Bond are separately abducted by Spectre operatives, while the rest of the group proceed with the plan. After Q succeeds in preventing Nine Eyes from going online, a struggle between M and C ends with C falling to his death. Bond is taken to the ruins of the old MI6 building, scheduled for demolition after Silver's bombing. Blofeld, still alive, but now scarred over his right eye, tells Bond that he must escape before explosives are detonated. In three minutes' time, or die trying to save Swan, Bond finds Swan and they escape by boat as the building collapses. Bond shoots down Blofeld's helicopter, which crashes onto Westminster Bridge. Blofeld survives and manages to crawl away from the wreckage, only for Bond to confront him at gunpoint. Blofeld dares Bond to kill him, but Bond refuses and instead leaves him to be arrested by M. He reunites with Swan and the two leave the bridge. The next morning, Bond borrows the repaired Aston Martin DB5 from Q and drives away with Swan. Marketing During the December 2014 press conference announcing the start of filming, Aston Martin and Eon unveiled the new DB10 as the official car for the film as year the DB10 was designed in collaboration between Aston Martin and the filmmakers, with only 10 being produced especially for Spectre as a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the company's association with the franchise. Only eight of those ten were used for the film. However, the remaining two were used for promotional work. After modifying the Jaguar CX-75 for the film, Williams F1 carried the 007 logo on their cars at the 2015 Mexican Grand Prix, with the team playing host to the cast and crew ahead of the Mexican premiere of the film this year. To promote the film, 
The film's marketers continued the trend established during Skyfall's production of releasing still images of clapperboards and video blogs on Eon's official social media accounts. On 13 March 2015, several members of the cast and crew, including Craig, Winshaw, Wilson and Mendez, as well as previous James Bond actor, Sir Roger Moore, appeared in a sketch written by David Walliams and the Dawson Brothers for comic relief's Red Nose Day on BBC One. In the sketch, they film a behind-the-scenes mockumentary on the filming of Spectre. The first teaser trailer for Spectre was released worldwide in March 2015, followed by the theatrical trailer in July and the final trailer in October. Release Spectre had its world premiere in London on 26 October 2015 at the Royal Albert Hall, the same day as its general release in the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland. Following the announcement of the start of filming, Paramount Pictures brought forward the release of Mission Impossible Road Nation to avoid competing with Spectre. In March 2015 IMAX Corporation announced that Spectre would be screened in its cinemas. Following Skyfall's success with the company, in the UK it received a wider release than Skyfall, with a minimum of 647 cinemas including 40 IMAX screens, compared to Skyfall's 587 locations and 21 IMAX screens. Spectre was released for digital HD on the 22nd of January 2016 and on DVD and Blu-ray online on the 22nd of February. 2016 in the US and UK respectively. It debuted atop the home video charts in both countries, and finished 2016 with 1.5 million units in the UK. The second best-selling title of the year, behind only Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and 2 million copies in the US. 12th in the year-end charts. It was later released by 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment through Walt Disney Studios Home. Entertainment on Ultra HD Blu-ray on February 25, 2020 in the US and March 23, 2020 in the UK. Reception Spectre grossed $880.7 million worldwide. $135.5 million of the takings were generated from the UK market and $200.1 million from North America worldwide. This made it the second-highest-grossing James Bond film after Skyfall, and the sixth-highest-grossing film of 2015. Deadline Hollywood calculated the net profit of the film to be $98.4 million when factoring. Together all expenses and revenues for the film this year Sony had expected the net profit of the film to be around $38 million had it performed to the same level of its predecessor. But since it earned 20% less than Skyfall, the profit in actual was $24.6 million. Sony paid 50% of the production costs for the film which totaled some $250 million after accounting for government incentives but received only 25% of certain profits. Once costs were recouped, the studio also spent tens of millions of dollars in marketing and had to give MGM some of the profit from the studio's non-bond films, including 22 Jump Street. In the United Kingdom, the film grossed $4.1 million, $6.4 million. From its Monday preview screenings, it grossed $6.3 million, $9.2 million. On its opening day and then $5.7 million, $8.8 .8 million. On Wednesday, setting UK records for both days. In the film's first seven days it grossed $41.7 million, $63.8 million, breaking the UK record for highest first week opening, set by Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban's $23.9 million, $36.9 million. In 2004, its Friday-Saturday gross was $20.4 million, $31.2 million compared to Skyfall's $20.1 million, $31 million. The film also broke the record for the best per-screen opening average with $110,000.
a record previously held by The Dark Knight with $100,200. It has grossed a total of $136.3 million there. In the UK, it surpassed Avatar to become the country's highest-grossing IMAX release ever with $10.09 million. Spectre opened in Germany with $22.5 million, including previews, which included a new record for the biggest Saturday of all time. Australia with $8.7 million, including previews, and South Korea opened to $8.2 million, including previews, despite the 13th of November Paris attacks, which led to numerous theaters being closed down. The film opened with $14.6 million, including $2 million in previews. In France, in Mexico, where part of the film was shot, it debuted with more than double that of Skyfall with $4.5 million. It also bested its predecessors opening in various Nordic regions where MGM is distributing, such as in Finland, $2.7 million, and Norway, $2.9 million and in other markets like Denmark, $4.2 million, the Netherlands, $3.4 million, and Sweden, $3.1 million. In India, it opened at no. 1 with $4.8 million which is 4% above the opening of Skyfall. It topped the German-speaking Switzerland box office for four weeks and in the Netherlands. It held the no. One spot for seven weeks straight where it topped Minions to become the top movie of the year. The top earning markets are Germany, $70.3 million, and France, $38.8 million. In Paris, it has the second highest ticket sales of all time with 4.1 million tickets sold only behind Spider-Man 3 which sold over 6.3 million tickets in 2007. In the United States and Canada the film opened on 6 November 2015, and in its opening weekend, was originally projected to gross $7,075 million from 3,927 screens. The widest release for a Bond film this year however, after it grossed $5.3 million from its early Thursday night showings and $28 million on its opening day. Weekend projections were increased to $7,580 million. The film ended up grossing $70.4 million in its opening weekend. About $20 million less than Skyfall's $90.6 million debut. Including IMAX previews. But nevertheless finished first at the box office. IMAX generated $9.1 million for Spectre at 374 screens. Premium large format made $8 million from 429 cinemas, reaping 11% of the film's opening, which means that Spectre earned $17.1 million, 23% of its opening weekend total in large format venues. Cinemark XD generated $1.9 million in 112 XD locations. In China, it opened on 12 November and earned $15 million on its opening day, which is the second biggest 2D single-day gross for a Hollywood film behind the $18.5 million. Opening day of Mission, Impossible Rogue Nation and occupying 43% of all available screens which included $790,000 in advance night screenings. Through its opening weekend, it earned $48.1 million from 14,700 screens which is 198% ahead of Skyfall. A new record for a Hollywood 2D opening. IMAX contributed $4.6 million on 246 screens. Also a new record for a three-day opening for a November release. Breaking into Stella's record. In its second weekend, it added $12.1 million falling precipitously by 75% which is the second worst second weekend drop. For any major Hollywood release in China of 2015, it grossed a total of $84.7 million there after four weekends. Foreign films in the Middle Kingdom play for 30 days only, unless granted special extensions, albeit a strong opening. 
It failed to attain the $100 million mark there as projected due to mixed response from critics and audiences as well as facing competition from local films. On review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 63% based on 347 reviews, with an average rating of 6.4-10. The website's critical consensus reads, Spectre nudges Daniel Craig's rebooted Bond closer to the glorious, action-driven spectacle of earlier entries. Although it's admittedly reliant on established 007 formula, on Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 60 out of 100, based on 48 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. Audiences polled by Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of A on an A plus to F scale. Prior to its UK release, Spectre mostly received positive reviews. Mark Kermode, writing in The Guardian, gave the film 4 out of 5 stars observing that the film did not live up to the standard set by Skyfall, but was able to tap into audience expectations. Writing in the same publication, Peter Bradshaw gave the film a full five stars, calling it inventive, intelligent and complex, and singling out Craig's performance as the film's highlight. In another five-star review, The Daily Telegraph's Robbie Collin described Spectre as a swaggering show of confidence. Lauding it as a feat of pure cinematic necromancy. Positive yet critical assessments included Kim Newman of Sight and Sound, who wrote that, for all its wayward plotting, including an unhelpful tie-in with Bond's childhood that makes very little sense, and off the peg elements, Spectre works as he felt the audience's patience gets tested by two and a half hours of set pieces strung on one of the series' thinner plots and IGN's Chris Tilly, who rated the film 7.2 out of 10, considering Spectre, solid if unspectacular, and concluding that the film falls frustratingly short of greatness. Critical appraisal was mixed in the United States. In a review for RogerEbert.com, Matt Zollersites gave Spectre 2.5 out of 4, describing it as inconsistent and unable to capitalize on its potential. Kenneth Turan reviewing the film for Los Angeles Times, concluded that Spectre comes off as exhausted and uninspired. Manola Dargis of the New York Times criticized the film as having nothing surprising and sacrificing its originality for the sake of box office returns. Forbes Scott Mendelssohn also heavily criticized the film, denouncing Spectre as the worst 007 movie in 30 years. Darren Franick of Entertainment Weekly viewed Spectre as an overreaction to our current blockbuster moment, aspiring to be a serialized sequel and proving itself as a saga, while noting that nothing that happens in Spectre holds up to even minor logical scrutiny. He had come not to bury Spectre, but to weirdly praise it, because the final act of the movie is so strange, so willfully obtuse that it deserves extra attention. Christopher Orr, writing in The Atlantic, also criticized the film, saying that Spectre backslides on virtually every. Lawrence Topman of the Charlotte Observer called Craig's performance board. James Board, Alyssa Rosenberg, writing for The Washington Post, stated that the film turned into a disappointingly conventional Bond film this year. In a positive review published in Rolling Stone, Peter Travers gave the film 3.5 stars out of 4, describing Spectre as party time for Bond fans. A fierce, funny, gorgeously produced valentine to the longest-running franchise in movies. Mick LaSalle from the San Francisco Chronicle, raved that one of the great satisfactions of Spectre is that, in addition to all the stirring action, and all the timely references to a secret organization out to steal everyone's personal information. We get to believe in Bond as a person. Stephen Whitty from the New York Daily News, who awarded the film four of five stars, stated that Craig is cruelly efficient. Dave Bautista makes a good, odd job like assassin. And while Lee Sadu doesn't leave a huge impression as this film's Bond girl, Perhaps it's because we've already met far too briefly the hypnotic Monica Bellucci, as the first real Bond woman since Diana Rigg. 
Chicago Sun-Times film reviewer Richard Roper, who gave the film three stars out of four, considered the film solidly in the middle of the all-time rankings, which means it's still a slick, beautifully photographed, action-packed, international thriller with a number of wonderfully, ludicrously entertaining set pieces, a sprinkling of dry wit, myriad gorgeous women and a classic psycho villain who is clearly out of his mind but seems to like it that way. Michael Phillips, reviewing for the Chicago Tribune, stated, for all its workmanlike devotion to out-of-control helicopters, Spectre works best when everyone's on the ground, doing his or her job driving expensive fast cars heedlessly, detonating the occasional wisecrack, enjoying themselves and their beautiful clothes. The variety film critic Guy Lodge complained in his review that what's missing is the unexpected emotional urgency of Skyfall, as the film sustains its predecessor's nostalgia kick with a less sentimental bent.